Good morning, social media! Ah, there are always many things that make fall season so unique, and one of them is, aside from football, we have playoff baseball, baby! I'm not even going to prolong this any longer. Let's cue the intro. No Mercy Sports coming at you, baby! Nobody can stop me now. Now, before we get into making predictions for baseball playoffs and football this coming weekend, we have to acknowledge the greatest I'm going to bet on myself season by Yankees player Aaron Judge. This man turned down an eight-year, $213.5 million contract from the Yankees and went out to not only put on a show, but show the Yankees he's worth more than that. So what did he decide to do? Well, aside from leading the league in RBIs, he set the new AL single season home run record by hitting 62. Woo! Now, while Judge hit 62 home runs this season, there are people out there that are slandering it by saying Barry Bonds is still the single season home run king. Okay, cool. Let's just fucking acknowledge what the Judge did this season. Who Gives a shit what Juice Head Bonds did. If Judge took the route that Bonds, Sosa, and McGuire took, he would have a hundred home runs fucking easily. Judge hit 62 home runs in an era where pitchers are getting more technical with their pitches, and it's next to impossible to hit the goddamn ball. On top of that, aside from the MLB back in the day profiting off of the Juice Head slash Dead Ball era, he did it where they're were drug tests being done for PEDs and violations for taking PEDs. Don't believe it? Fernando Tatis Jr. was close to coming back to the main roster for the Padres, but got suspended 80 games for taking PEDs. So bottom line, shut the fuck up about everything and give props to what Judge did this season. My God, people. Uh, a glorious event is upon us, October Baseball! Yes, sir, the wild card games start today, and it's time to make some predictions, baby! Kicking things off, we have the Rays taking on the Indians. Yeah, fuck your life! If you think I'm calling them what they are now, woo! Man, get the fuck out of here. Fucking snowflake generation offended by fucking everything nowadays. <laughs> Anywho, since 2019, the Rays have been in the playoffs, and the furthest they got was the 2020 World Series. Since their World Series appearance, appearance, they've been coming up a little short in recent years. However, for this wild card game against the Indians, or wild card series, I should say, against the Indians, I'm taking the Rays in a 2-1 to one series win. Cleveland may have won the central title for the first time since 2018, but Tampa has the roster and the better rotation. <laughs> Ah, there's nothing like sports. You're always going to see something crazy or something magical. Enter the St. Louis Cardinals. As Adam Wainwright, Albert Pujols, and Yadier Molina are on their last dance with the Cardinals and take on the Phillies. The Phillies have bounced back, bounced back after firing manager Joe Girardi. But I'm not betting against the Cardinals who are making their eighth playoff appearance since 2011. And the Phillies are in the playoffs for the first time since 2011. Ugh, man, I'm pretty sure hell froze over again as the Mariners are in the playoffs for the first time since 2001. 20 years! In case you don't, you don't know what was going on the last time the Mariners made the playoffs, here's a quick recap. Mariners legend Ichiro Suzuki was a rookie in, the, in MLB coming over from Japan Current Mariners star Julio Rodriguez was nine months old. Harry Potter was the number one movie. Shrek was, was released in theaters. The first version of Apple's iPod was, was released. And there was a partridge and a fucking pear tree. Moving on, the Mariners take on the Toronto Blue Jays in the wild card. Now, sure, it's been 20 years since Seattle actually made the playoffs, but they have a good-looking roster and a good-looking bullpen. I'm going with Seattle winning 2-1. to one. 
and move on to face Houston. Fuck you, Astros. Finally, we had the Padres taking on the Mets. Ah, the Mets should consider themselves really lucky that they kept their composure and still made it to the playoffs and didn't choke worse than they did last year, finishing with a losing record. Now, during this season, the Padres acquired acquired Juan Soto from the Nationals. I said San Diego would be lucky to see past the wild card round, and I still believe that they won't see past the wild card round. The Mets look too good to lose to the Padres. The Mets are winning this one in a series sweep. Uh, let's move on from the wild card, shall we? We have four juggernauts that the wild card teams will face in the divisional series. All four, te- all four teams that are waiting in the divisional round have very valid arguments to be World Series champions. Let's start in the NL with the reigning, defending champions, Atlanta Braves, who have a serious argument to win it all once again and go back-to-back. Right now, the Braves are playing like they did last year, and if they continue to play like this, we're seeing Atlanta hoist up that trophy once again. Uh, The Dodgers... They've always been favorites to win it all, but they always come up a little short. Granted, they won 111 games this season, but there's been a few times they had a great record in recent years, but still didn't win. Numbers never lie, people. Here's a lesson of what the Dodgers have done since 2013. They lost to the Cardinals in the NLCS in 2013, lost to the Cardinals again in the fucking NLDS in 2014, lost to the fucking Mets in the NLDS in 2015, lost to the Cubs in the NLCS in 2016, lost to the Astros in the 2017 World Series. However, that World Series is tainted after it was put out that the Astros fucking cheated to win. Moving on, the Dodgers lost to the Red Sox in the World Series again in 2018. Although, again, it was later put out that the Red Sox cheated. So there's that. 2019, oh man, this is a great one. They lost to the fucking Nationals in the NLCS who had less than a 1% chance to make the fucking playoffs after the All-Star break. Are we starting to see a trend here, people? Now, sure, L.A. finally won it all on a shortened season because of COVID. So much like the NBA, this was a championship won at summer camp. This is what really cracks me up, though. 2021, as the defending champions and possible favorites to win it all, once again, they fucking lost to the Braves in the NLCS when the Braves caught fire towards the end of the season. <sighs> As much as I want to pick L.A. to win it all this year, not going against postseason blunders. Like I said, the numbers never lie, people. Now we have the Astros, a team that's been trying to prove they can win the World Series without cheating. Sure, they've been making it to the playoffs and making it back to the World Series, but much like the much like the Dodgers, they've constantly come up short. I honestly knew they weren't going to win anything for quite a while after they lost to the fucking Nationals. Again, that Nationals team had a less than 1% chance to make the playoffs. And they won the World Series that year. Ah, the Yankees. A team that hasn't sniffed a World Series appearance since 2009. However, after the season Judge has been having, they have a really good shot to win it all this year and end their 13-year drought. All in all, if I had to pick one team to win the World Series, I'm going with Atlanta. I would pick L.A., but their history speaks for itself. Oh, man. Okay, time to move on. Woo! It's so good to have football back, both NFL and college. And once again, it's time to make some predictions. Getting things started with college. Number four ranked Michigan takes on Indiana. While Indiana may be three and two, there's a reason Michigan is ranked number four in the country. Go blue. Go blue. Next up, eight ranked Tennessee is heading into Baton Rouge and going up against 25 ranked LSU. Sure, the Tigers haven't have gotten some traction under their feet now, but man, oh man, do the volunteers look deadly this year. Tennessee is taking this one easily. It's no surprise that TCU is back in the rankings and ranked 17th. 
But what's even crazier is that for the first time since 2009, the Jayhawks are ranked and 5-0. and oh. This is sure to be a great game. And as much as I want to go with TCU, I'm going to have to go with Kansas on this one. Oh, man, oh, man, Mississippi State has been surging recently. And that has and that has them sitting at 23 ranked 23rd in the country. Arkansas was ranked 20th going into the game against Alabama last week. Unfortunately, after their loss, they now find themselves unranked. Mississippi is winning this game, no questions asked. Now here's a good game that's going to be exciting to watch. The Red River Rivalry as the Sooners take on the Longhorns. Hey, Texas, horns fucking down! Sooners are winning this, bitches! Whoop! After a winning season last year, only to come up short, the 24-ranked Bearcats take on USF. There's no question that the Bearcats are winning this game in dominating fashion. Georgia, I got a question for you. How the fuck are you motherfuckers going to be the top-ranked team in the country only to let teams like Missouri and Kent fucking state score a combined 44 points those are teams who asses you kick handily despite the close game if auburn wins against you idiots it wouldn't be too surprising war fucking eagle <sighs> okay gotta calm down <sighs> that's better all right now then Seven-ranked Oklahoma State takes on the Red Raiders. Despite a loss to Kansas State, I'm picking Texas Tech to win this game. Ah, man. Here's another game that's sure to be interesting as 11-ranked Utah versus 18-ranked UCLA. It's been a while since UCLA has been in the rankings. And after their win against Washington last week, the Bruins could walk away with a win against Utah. These next three games are no surprise, however. Number three, Ohio State will get the win over Michigan State handily. Number nine, o Ole Miss gets a dominant win over Vanderbilt. And 21-ranked Washington handles a ASU without breaking a sweat. Miami, what the fuck? The U is not back, especially after losing to middle fucking Tennessee. You best pull your heads out of your asses and walk away with a win against North Carolina. Otherwise, you'll find yourselves on the losing end again. Okay, how the hell is James, James Madison undefeated and not ranked? Nevertheless, though, the Dukes are walking away with a win against Arkansas State. Here's another surprise, too. Despite Appalachian State being 3-2 and two right now, they still walk away. They're going to walk away four and two after they beat Texas State. Now, even though number five Clemson was in quite the battle against 14 ranked NC State, there's no question that the Tigers are going to get a very satisfying win over Boston College. Man, these next three games are going to are sure to be all out wars. But six ranked USC is getting the win over Washington State. 13 ranked Kentucky is walking away with a win against South Carolina, and 15 ranked Wake Forest beats Army. Here's another game that's sure to be a shootout as 16-ranked BYU takes on the 2-2 two two Fighting Irish at Raider Stadium in Vegas. It's going to be a close game, but cheer, cheer for old Notre Dame. Wake up the echoes cheering her name. Woo! Another game that's going to be close as 20-ranked Kansas State faces Iowa State. It'll be close, but Kansas State gets the win. you got to be fucking kidding me. The Fighting a lion eye or a four and one and unranked? Blasphemous! Anyways, this is sure to be another war, but I see Illinois getting the dub. Oh man, no surprise here as Alabama will decimate AM. Man, another game that's sure to be close? Man, what a Saturday afternoon it's gonna be tomorrow when FSU takes on 14 ranked NC State. It'll be close, but the Wolfpack gets the victory. This team has been quite surprising lately. The Shanta Clears. Hold up. What the fuck is a Shanta Clear? Anyways, Coastal Carolina is currently undefeated, and it'll stay that way after they beat UL Monroe. And finally, 12 ranked Oregon faces Arizona in the later evening, and it's no secret that the Ducks are walking away victorious. Quack. That does it for college football. Feel free to give your predictions in the comments below. 
Uh, but we're moving on, people. It's time to make some NFL predictions. Kicking things off, we have another game in London as the Giants take on the Green Bay Packers. Despite the hot start from Big Blue in a long fucking time, Green Bay walks away victorious. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. Schittsburg is 14-point fucking underdogs going up against Buffalo. Hey, Steelers, on a scale from 1 to 10, my friend, y'all are fucked. Buffalo covers that spread with no problem. The Chargers versus Browns game is going to is sure to be a good one, but San Diego walking away with that win. Yeah, I said San Diego, fucking fight me. Now we have a battle of two NFC North teams as the Bears go into Minnesota. While the Vikings barely, barely got the win over the Saints on a double fucking doink. Didn't think I'd see that again. Chicago gets the win. Skull. That means cheers, Vikings fans. Don't know why you say cheers as a battle cry. Sure, it sounds cool, but meh. A battle of one in three teams is taking place on Sunday when Detroit goes into Foxborough to face the Patriots. New England is down to their third-string quarterback, Bailey Zap, Zap, Zappy, whatever. And while I want to pick New England, the Lions are getting this win. New Orleans, not sure. You're getting the win over the Seahawks, especially after the double doink last week against Minnesota. You might have, you might get the win if you get the crappy version of Geno Smith. Seriously, it's been back and forth with this guy since he got the starting job. Uh, hey, Miami, are we sure Tua is at home recovering from his concussion or is it a fucking back injury? Either way, y'all some fucking Jagoffs! Anyways, with Tua out and Bridgewater under center, it looks like the Jets and that motherfucker, both figuratively and literally, Zach Wilson get the W. These next games are no doubters. The Bucks get the win over the Falcons, Titans over the Redskins, and again, fucking fight me because I said Redskins, and the Jaguars over the winless Texans. San Francisco versus Carolina should be a good one, but the 49ers get the win. Looks like Baker isn't the solution for Carolina, but guess it's better to have him as a quarterback than uh, having a quarterback that claimed he saw ghosts. Looking your way, Sam Darnold! Ah, yes, as Fox likes to call it, America's Game of the Week! As the Cowboys take on the defending champions, L.A. Rams. It'll be a battle of defense with Aaron Donald leading the Rams and Micah Parsons leading the Cowboys. But nonetheless, the Rams get the victory. Now despite the now despite the fact that the Cardinals got the win over the Panthers last week, Philadelphia remains undefeated and goes 5 and 0. For Sunday night football, it's the Bengals taking on the Ravens. Baltimore, you've been blowing leads in games you should have won. Can I offer a piece of advice for you guys? Get your heads out of your asses and finish the games. But if they don't, the Bengals and Macaulay Culkin, I mean Joe Burrow takes sole possession of first in the AFC North. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It was great to see the Raiders get their first win of the season against the Broncos last week, but it looks like they're moving to 1-4 against the Chiefs on Monday night. Ah, great time of the year fall is. From college football and NFL to October baseball. So fasten your seatbelts and hold on to your hats because aside from the spooky season October has to offer, it is sure to be filled with absolute excitement. Hope everyone enjoys their weekend. I'll see y'all next week. Peace out.